Good morning. I invite you to see that you are able and join me as we give thanksgiving for baptism. We are gathered this day as baptized children of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined in Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took life. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us to live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Exceeded. So I'm told that children may not actually be in the building, but they may be watching from home. So I hope that that is true. So one of the things that I remember growing up and going to school in the fall after a summer off was noticing how my fellow classmates and I have grown in comparison with each other. So from first grade on, there were times when I noticed that at times I was kind of tall, at times I was about right with my classmates, 
But from about seventh and eighth grade, I realized that my classmates were going like this, and I wasn't. So about eighth grade, I was as tall as I am right now. And so I don't know about our children, whether you compare yourselves to classmates or to friends or to brothers and sisters, I don't know whether you measure yourself up um, against uh, maybe some older siblings. Maybe there's a place in your house where mom or dad measure your height as you're growing. And that's always very exciting to grow. But sometimes we grow and we don't know exactly what to do. We might feel awkward. We might feel strange. We might feel, well, I wish I wasn't so grown up. As you know, things are kind of strange right now. Things are very different. But we trust in God. We trust in Jesus. That even while we have to keep six feet away from each other, Jesus is as close to us as ever. God is close to us as ever. And at times when we feel like things have, have gone way past our ability to understand them, we trust that God has us in his hands. Just like the, the old song, uh, God's got the, Jesus got the whole world in his hands. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly God, be with us. Help us to grow. Help us to see growth in others as well. Lord God, we pray that as you measure us, that you will always measure us as people who are yours, and that you will spread your love to us with abandon. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits, of, <clears throat> waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from the bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for in hopes for what we sin is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. And as be God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in the bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, that anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amazing. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, what's been going on? Last time I was here preaching for you, I think it was the second Sunday of December right before Pastor Loudon was to arrive and begin her ministry uh, among you. And, uh, and the excitement and the hope and the promise of that coming relationship and all that that was going to happen uh, seemed very real at the time. It seemed very important and it seemed to bring some excitement to this congregation. But then something else happened. Something that maybe none of us were fully prepared for. A pandemic that has caused such disruption to our lives. Such disruption to 
how we see the world, how we imagine being safe in the world. It's like a lot of weeds growing up faster than we are, so that it's hard to even see beyond the tops of these weeds, that we seem to shrink as the people of God. How do we understand the weeds in the world? Matthew's gospel is pretty plain. Matthew's gospel declares that the weeds are sown by the evil one, that they are the children of darkness, the children of evil, and that they, at the end of time, will be gathered together, together, bonded, and thrown into the fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The first thing you need to know is that this parable and this language only appears in Matthew's gospel. It's not in the other three. It seems to be that Matthew has this vision of the world, the vision of the church in which there are dire circumstances that surround them. But Matthew also says that faith continues to grow that the weeds, even as dense and tall as they seem to be, are not able to strangle out the faith that you and I have been given. I think about the church's ministry during this time of pandemic. The things didn't all stop. That most of us in, in who wear the things that I wear and wear this collar have had to find new and different ways to do our ministry. Sometimes it took a while. Sometimes it, it, it meant getting Zoom right. It meant being able to allow people to call in and to join in at things like Bible study and worship. But it happened. Worship continued, even as we were not gathered together physically. But we were gathered together spiritually because of the faith that has been given to us. Where does this faith come from? Is it something that we're born with? Is it something that is passed on down from, from uh, previous generations to us? Well, yes and yes. But the real beginning of faith for the body of Christ starts in the waters of baptism, which we gave thanks for today. Our faith is a gift from God. When we are named and claimed in those waters of holy baptism, God declares to you, you are good, you are mine, I love each of you. You are my child. We are God's children, just as much as Jesus who went to the cross was God's son. We are God's daughters and sons. We are heirs of the kingdom. Our life doesn't always mean that we are going to be captured in that field, always growing alongside the weeds, the challenges, the problems of this world that ultimately we are a people, not of despair, but of great hope. If you're like me, you read the paper or listen to the news or 
watch things on, on TV and see how the world is coping with pandemic, coping with race relations, coping with divisions throughout our society. And we wonder, is this the end? Is this how it's going to end for us? Is the world going to stop spinning? Is the sun going to no longer shine? The crops in the fields are just going to rot there? But Jesus says, at harvest time, harvest time, God sends harvesters. The problems will go away and be burned. That we who are the body of Christ will go on in the love of God. We are not to be despairing. We are not to see any challenge and say, this is too daunting for us. Because we are baptized. We have been given the great gift of faith to allow us to endure and allow us to grow in our faith. This pandemic is not going to last forever. I predict that racial relations will eventually get better. I will also say that at some point, we will not be as divided as we are right now. That we will grow tall and proud. We will outpace the problems of this world, outpace the weeds, because God will continue to bless us, to be with us, to nourish us with what we need. We are baptized. We are not to despair. We are to have hope. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your fields. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially Pauline, Charlotte, Louise, Loretta, Rodney, Mike, Nancy, Carol. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, first responders, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We remember especially William, John, Stacy, Mike, Liz, James, Dixie, David, Evan, and Bill. We also pray for all those who work in many ways to ensure we have necessities and food available. Lord, in your mercy, Hear In the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for 
the safety of those who travel, especially Pastor Jamie and Paul. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, be your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share together God's peace safely. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast, to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are there announcements for this morning? Then receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.